Hello, welcome to Skull RPG Podcast. My name is Dwight Skull. My name is Jacob Skull. And today we're going to teach you how to tell, tell your, your story. story. So this one is going with the dual timelines concept and what other thing you could do with it. So this one is very similar to the uh, reason, the example we did last time with the flashbacks. But this one's a little bit more different because you're, this one is kind of, you have a post-apocalyptic future where... Some cataclysm caused the world to change, and your players in the modern day are going through the ruins of a dungeon, or a town, or a castle, trying to figure out how can they restore order back to the world yeah. before the cataclysm. And as they go, they find certain objects that bring back flashbacks of previous characters that they role play out like last time. But the kind of the end point of this one, which was is kind of cool, is. Yeah, as you start to play at the flashbacks, the end goal of that is the, your flashback characters cause the cataclysm. Yeah, so the concept around this was my wife and I just watched Gravity Sky, which is on Netflix that just released. Um, there's really no spoilers that are going to be given for Gravity Sky, so if you haven't seen it, go ahead and take a look. I, I enjoyed it. Um, but what happens, and you find this out in the first like 10 minutes, okay, is that the earth is dying they never really reveal why which i thought was kind of cool um but the earth is dying and so one of the things i thought about was okay so what if you played through not where like literally everybody dies on the planet but there's these major events that happen that cause a good chunk of humanity to go away mm -hmm. and your player characters are kind of running around in a mad max style um, post-apocalyptic world but they are really intrigued to find out like why did this happen because no one seems to know so they travel across you know city to city really ruins to ruins until they finally find get to a big enough metro metropolitan city metropolis city to find some sort of records which then lead them and find the, they find clues and so what's cool thing is as you start finding clues, then you can flash back to the other player characters doing the things that are important. And so you could have them be scientists or you could have it be a military operation. It really just depends on how you choose to have the world end is to choose what these players should be. And regardless, though, every time there's some cool event or some you know important thing found, like um, let's say that the world ending event is the players your old players and technically your current players but the second set of characters end up creating a what they think is supposed to be a wormhole but in reality what it did is it grabbed um probably you know one to three hundred alternate realities and basically merged them onto this plane of existence all at the exact same time which mm -hmm. caused the world to functionally end and most people to just be erased. And so that's one thing you can talk about is like, there's a lack of bodies. Yeah. Like there's like, you get to this town and it looks like this town has just been recently destroyed and there's just a lack. Like if there's a million people in this town, there's... how come there's like seven bodies? Like what's going on? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Well, in reality, what happened is, yeah, the city got destroyed because all these realities warped on top of it. And in order to, Basically, in order for reality to write itself, it destroyed the city and then erased everybody that wasn't in all the timelines. And then whoever wasn't in all the timelines either survived or got killed based on the city destroying itself in the process. And so you have all these great concepts around, you know, so what caused all of this? And as you're going through, as they start finding clues to these things, they could start finding like a piece of the gate that did, that did it. And you can go back to the discovery of your guys, you know, inventing this and making roles to invent it and talking about what it is. Or maybe you have a you have two things going on. You have a political um, backstory for the back characters where they're playing political against each other and they're doing roles to find out, you know, how they can jog for funding and they can get other information and stuff out. And then your main one is more of a Mad Max fighting style game. Mm -hmm. So then they roll up two totally different set of characters, um, you know, brain nerdy at, nerd guys. And then, you know, some people that are smart, but more in, involved in like, they have a lot of high, they have a lot of points in survival skills type of thing. 
Their smartness is more of like mechanics to keep whatever they are using as transport around. It's not necessarily like theoretical physics. Exactly. When you transport them back into the other characters, though, the past looks like the future because it's all, it's still standing. It's it's scientifically sci-fi. Society hasn't ripped itself apart yet. Right. So you get this cool thing where you're going in the past, but in reality, it feels like you're going into the future. And what I would do with it is simply that, where I would just start finding certain key pieces of information. How did they get it? Did they steal it? You know, you could have some espionage and stuff going on where in order to get that information, they stole it from a different country. And your old characters, right? the other characters were involved in that kind of theft and putting it all together. I mean, you could do a thing where maybe the old characters aren't directly responsible for putting everything together that destroys everything. But they were literally like information brokers and they were kind of like more mafia information brokers. And so you have like more of a shadow run S campaign where they're breaking into computers, breaking into physical locations, putting people down and they're being paid by a government to bring all of that back or, and all that funds yeah. them, the, the scientists to do it directly. Mm-hmm. Or, or you could also go just the pure route of a uh, half-life where, they're doing experiments on this weird experimental thing, and then it goes haywire, and now you have aliens. Right, but what would you be playing before that? Would you be the scientists? or I'm saying that your scientists are a lot like Morgan Freeman. They're in the past trying to do a greater good thing by using this experimental tech, and it goes haywire. Sure. And you start to find that out. It's just another way, thing to use it in the past. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, so there's so many different ways you can go, right? Mm-hmm. Depending on how action oriented you want to be, or how political you wanted to be, or how whatever you wanted to be, the past again shouldn't look like you just telling, "Oh, your four scientists figured this out." It, there should be role playing, acting roles, things that can and should go wrong, and it's okay because at the end of the day, even though your characters in the past had a setback, it doesn't mean that the thing didn't happen. It just meant that it took a little bit longer. Because we all know it happened. Mm -hmm. Because the world is destroyed. So we all know it happened. So anyway, that said, there's a lot of different ways you can do this. But this is one where you have a fun, like, Mad Max meets sci-fi. The world is ending. And your characters in the past, the characters in the present, at the very end. And this is what I would do. Like, the very end of the campaign... Like, you have it revealed that it was the characters in the past that basically did something, either got enough information, helped compile it, or actively involved in making it, and they were the ones that did the experiment. And, you know, that experiment basically caused the entire world as we know it to end. And, um, you know, to me it's a really cool way just to end the entire thing. And if you wanted, you could then do a total party kill at the end, you know, where they're fighting to figure out, like, the current characters, the modern characters in the post-apocalyptic are fighting a group of people to to get this last piece of information because they decided to set up camp in, like, the ruins of the the laboratory. And, um, you know, you guys are fighting your way through it, and you can do, like, a cool, you know, Firefly, the Serenity movie scene where... You know, maybe only one character unlocks the secret and lives just long enough to kind of see it all happen. And then it all kind of fades away. Like everybody gets killed. They all get overrun by the monsters outside the gates, roughly. And that's the end of it. And your players now realize, oh, man, our yeah, we figured it out, but holy crap, I didn't see our characters being like the direct or primary indirect cause. Like if they just, you know, and then your players kind of feel bad. Like, man, if I hadn't critted that, successfully critted that role, we wouldn't have gotten that information and then we wouldn't have actually <laughs> destroyed the world. Like it's a cool concept to play with. Where mm-hmm. your, your players might feel a little remorse for doing a good job. Yep, even though that... No matter what, no matter what, what they rolled in the past, yeah, so would have happened. It would have happened. It right. just took longer. You're the GM. It would have happened. But it's this cool thing to play around with the concept of that. And so I guess I don't know if your players are like mine. We like to play around with concepts and have these cool reveals and stuff like that. And so this is how I've designed this campaign in just a quick cool reveal at the end of 
hey, how did this all work out? And this could be something as short as, um, I need a month. You need a month before your next GM takes over or you before you can flesh something else out. You could run this in a month without a lot of stress and hassle. And that may be how I would run it. I mean, I don't know if I would want to run this for like eight months and then do that reveal, but I'd definitely run it for a month or three, maybe up to five. Like four to eight sessions would be perfect for this. Yeah, four to eight sessions would be really good because you don't have to do a lot of flashbacking with it. And so you're really primarily leaning on your um, modern post-apocalyptic characters to carry most of the load. And then the other characters just come out for a couple of cameos to basically do some really cool things that in the end really mess up the entire planet. So Mm -hmm. anyway, hopefully this idea is helpful. Steal it, adapt it, twist it, whatever you need to do. We'll see you tomorrow. Hey, thanks for listening. And for more resources, please go to SkullRPG.com.